The Hog's Die is brought to you by TicketClub.com, your one-stop shop for live events nationwide. Whether you're looking for game, theater, or live performance tickets, don't sweat it. TicketClub.com has you covered. So make sure you're going there for all your live entertainment needs, and make sure you're clicking over to them from the banner at the top of thehogsdie.com. Hey everybody, and welcome to another week of Redskins offseason fun fantasticness here at the Hogside. It's such a great week that only two of us have shown up. It's just Steve and I for the day. Uh, this is Alex, your you know hesitant host whenever Sean's not here. So we've we've been abandoned. Yeah, they won't even answer our texts or emails. <laughs> like, hey, we have a show. Yeah, hey guys, guys. <laughs> I, I, I'd be willing to bet money that Sean's asleep. I, I would be too. And, you know, it's kind of like I uh, mentioned to you on our blog the other day. It, it's now the week of 4th of July. Everyone's just cashing out for a while. You know, like that's just what yeah. happens. It's that, yeah. it's that time of the summer. <coughs> um, I'll be going out of town for next weekend. You know, I, I can't wait. It may be, it may be me doing this show myself. <laughs> yeah. Steve just talking in the microphone going, nah. <laughs> I, I bet you I could babble for an hour. If I really had to, I bet you I could babble for it, an Steve, hour. Steve, if you ever have to solo 15 minutes, that's all I ask. <laughs> 15 minutes, that's it? Yes. You want me to go for an hour? No. No one wants me to go for an hour. Nobody. <laughs> you don't think, I, I wonder if I could. I bet you I bet could, you could. Yeah. but no one wants to. No one wants to hear that. <laughs> No, I don't want to hear that. Okay, well, let's get to things people do want to hear. Okay. Um, Because even though it's a light news week for the Redskins, because I I don't think anyone's even at Redskins Park. Most of them are in France or – This is the time of the year where the NFL's on vacation. Yeah, everyone's on vacation. Uh, But we did get some news, some good news, and let's start with that, and that's that Doug Williams gets another year on his contract. He got a one-year – uh, option accepted by the team, not a surprise, I don't think. I, I think as long as Bruce Allen's in charge, Doug has a job. And even if Bruce gets fired, Dan will probably want to keep Doug because it's Doug. Yeah. Um, yeah, Doug's original contract was three years. Yep. You know, 17, 18, 19. They added 2020 onto the, his deal. So now he's locked in. Um Jay Gruden is locked in. I think what this is really about is, is they're just kind of maintaining the status quo for yeah. a while. Yeah. I think that the next year in particular is going to be pretty telling. You know, if the team really craters, you know, I think a whole bunch of people are going to get fired. <laughs> um, so I think they're just kind of lining up contracts right. more than anything else. And, and, and yeah, would would Dan Snyder ever have the guts to really fire Doug Williams? I don't think so. No. I think, I think that if Bruce got fired, his replacement might be able to, but – you know, I, I don't yeah. ever see Dan doing it. And uh, let's also be honest: this is Doug's retirement kind of place because yeah, last job. Yeah, he yeah. he's what sixty four, sixty five. So yeah, you know, it's not like he's going to go on and be a star GM anywhere else after this. Probably, probably not. I mean, I, I don't know how much money he's made, but I mean, he's not Bill Gates. Mm-hmm. You know, he. I mean, I don't know if he needs to work or not. I mean, I don't know how much the coach at Grambling makes. Certainly, probably he's done pretty well, good he's money. Not. You know, it's a private school, so you know he's pro- probably was still pulling in two fifty or so at least, or something like that. You know, a good living. Oh yeah, def- definitely yeah. that much for sure. Yeah, but uh, you know, I don't know if maybe I don't know if Doug needs the money or not needs the money. But what I do know, Dan Snyder's not going to fire a legend. That just is never going to happen. If he, like you said, if I think if I don't think he has the guts to fire Bruce Allen at this point. Bruce Allen's done absolutely everything mm-hmm. to get fired, and he hasn't been fired. It's like he's got some like magic fairy dust he sprinkled on Dan Snyder or something. But if that hypothetically happened, like you said, and you brought in like a third party right. GM who's somebody totally not in the Redskins family, yeah, then maybe you ask Doug to retire. I could see that happening. Well, I mean, I, I could see him changing roles a bunch of times too, because at some point you want Kyle Smith to get that GM title. I think if you're yeah. planning ahead, so then Doug maybe moves into the front office as some other fun title that a you consult- just make up, a consultant. Or yeah. Something. Um, but by the way, I, I just double checked. Doug's been in football since 1978. That is a good long career if you want to. You know, consider that. Well, uh, cons- considering he's a pl- been a, as a player too. You mean. Yeah, yeah. As a starting as a player. 
Yeah. I mean, then you could also say he was playing in college and high school. He's been doing this for 45-plus years of his life. That's a that's a nice little thing to have going. Hey, hey it's what everybody's dream, man. Right. Everybody who does a show like this. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, for us, it, it was a dream that never would happen. But for him, it actually <laughs> exactly. happened. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Partly because you and I lack any ability. athletic talent or size or anything they would need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's certainly not at that level, yeah. for sure. No, but anyway, I mean, I think um, – I don't know. See, I don't know if the team is smart enough to want to have a GM. They probably are smart enough to know they want to keep Kyle Smith. Right. But how to do that? I mean, the Redskins tend to bungle um, everything when it comes to front office stuff. Right. And so are they really smart enough? I mean, the cold-blooded business move would be tell Doug to retire. We'll send you out in a blaze of glory, Mm -hmm. you know, but tell him to retire. And then you bring Kyle Smith up as the GM and you reorganize the entire front office. Oh, at, at the, well, at let the, him do what he wants. That's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. yeah, let him let him reorganize the front office however you want to do it. Um, I think Dan is too much of a control freak to ever let anybody do that. Right. Uh, I don't think – Bruce Allen, I think um, – That would be too much of a threat much, to him. He wouldn't do it. Yeah, with as much objectivity as I can muster because I didn't really get behind that whole – we didn't really get behind that whole fire Bruce Allen well, hashtag. I kind of did. <laughs> yeah, we didn't on as a site no. for a variety of reasons. But um, I think Bruce is really just in it for himself. Yes. The ego of having this job title. Mm-hmm. I don't think – he probably cares to some extent about the team, but he cares far more about his own power and ego than mm-hmm. anything else. Right. And he's put himself in a position to where, you know, he's sort of the only one that gets to Dan. Mm-hmm. He, you know, has any in real influence on Dan. And and there's a reason for that. And every time anybody threatens him, they're gone. Right. Scott McLuhan. Gone. Threatened. Gone. Brian LaFamina. Gone. Gone. Yep. Yeah. So Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins wasn't even a threat. Gone. <laughs> Gone. Because he could yeah, have been so a threat. I think um, Bruce Allen is the root of all evil in this organization. Right. Uh, I, Dan is not a good owner, for sure. But um, he would be much better served if he had a competent um, GM who or team president who actually cared right. about the organization. So, and someone that's running not, the front office, I don't really care what the title is. But – yeah, right. President, CEO, I don't care what it, whatever it is. Somebody who's doing Bruce Allen's role, who's not Bruce Allen, who actually cares, mm-hmm. would do this organization wonders. And then, yeah, okay, when Doug is ready to retire, you bring Kyle Smith up. The problem is, if somebody wants to interview Kyle Smith like next year, they could. Yeah, yeah. Then what do you do? You know, right. then you have to promote him to keep him. Mm-hmm. And so then you kind of have to force Doug out. And, and, you know, there are a lot of things we don't know as fans. And I'm – because I actually think Kyle Smith probably has a decent relationship with guys like Bruce because his father and Bruce were friends. So it's you, you got yeah. that whole thing going. You yeah. know, the NFL has so many family connections. but uh, It's all about that. Yeah. Let, let's get back to the Doug Williams story. Um, okay. There were also a couple interviews he did throughout the week. Uh, one in particular raised a lot of eyebrows in where he said that uh, he was talking about Haskins, really likes what he sees, uh, thinks they need to make sure they bring him along the right way. It didn't really kind of elaborate what that is. But he said that the decision to start Haskins or when he'll start falls to Bruce, Dan, Doug, and Jay all together. And – now, if you're ranking them in order, I don't know. I assume Jay and Doug are probably one and two who you would trust to actually make this call, Steve. Uh, oh, yeah, well, obviously. Yeah, I, I don't know about where Dan and Bruce come in third and fourth, but it, it, it might be a distant fourth on Let me give some of people them. a little bit of insight from my personal experience. Some the, it's, it's the owners do – Look, from a in a perfect world, the coach would be the one to only to make the decision, right? Mm-hmm. It ought to be the coach's right. call, That's, only the in, coach's call. In the call. dream world, it's the coach, maybe yeah. the GM, because the GM's kind of in charge. My of the experience picture. in this, being in in a building, was that the owner has an input. Mm-hmm. You know, the owners want to have an input. They don't care about like who's like the starting middle linebacker. We're going to get to that later t- right. today. But they do care about the quarterback and kind of the big picture items. And so – and sometimes owners want to have an input. Dan Snyder has historically been a micromanaging meddler. Right. He definitely has taken that to an extreme. The owner I was with um, 
It wasn't quite to that extent, but he did get involved to somewhat. Right. I don't think any owner anywhere in the NFL, I think all 32 are going to have some sort of input into your star quarterback that you drafted 15th overall. Yeah. <laughs> it's not realistic to think for those of you out there that say it ought to be, you know, it should be Jay and only Jay's decision. I'm with you. That's just not reality. Um, now I don't think it should be a collaborative group discussion. You know, I don't think they need to sit down in a room and let Jay make a case and then let Bruce make a case. That's that's not productive either. No. But the idea that there's going to be no input at all, um, it's just not reality. You know, um, I, I think Dan probably wants Haskins out there as soon as possible. Probably. That would be my gut. marketing perspective. Yeah. My gut reaction would be Dan and probably Bruce by proxy will want that yeah. too. Bruce wants whatever's best for Bruce, right. and which would mean, you know, making uh, Haskins a success, which would in turn lead to increased ticket sales. You know, that's well. What but what is uh, better for him, that or the fact that he traded for Case Keenum, and Case Keenum could be a good player too? <laughs> yeah, but there's about two people out there who are excited about Case. Yeah, Keenum. I know. No, no one's and excited that's Mr. about and Mrs. him. Mrs. Keenum. Yeah, <laughs> that Mister and Mrs. Keenum are excited, right? <laughs> you know. Well, I, I, uh, and so his anyway. wife probably. Yeah, I don't know if he's married. I'm pretty is sure he's married. He's married. <laughs> okay, well, his wife is excited yeah. too. So, Mr. and Mrs. Keenum and then Mrs. Keenum. <laughs> the other Mrs. Keenum are all excited. The rest of us are a bit apathetic right. about it. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, I mean... I don't wish I, you a will John, on him. It's not like John well, Beck not. or something where I kind of was rooting against him at that one point. You know? <laughs> I did. John Beck was too nice a guy. I couldn't root against him. <laughs> uh, but, like, Theismann talked about this this week too, if you saw Yeah, this. I did see that. Th- Theismann said, you just flat out, I'll let Haskins sit an entire year. Right. That's a bit extreme, too. To me, here's what I think about this. I think the best, shockingly enough, I think the best quarterback ought to play. Right. You know, if, if Haskin, Haskins only started, what, 13 games, mm-hmm. whatever the number is, 13, yeah. 12, 13, 14 games, um, it's not a lot. And it, the experience is definitely an issue. My natural inclination going into training camp would be to put Case Keenum as the number one heading into training camp. But if, if Haskins proves he's down with it, and he's got it all. He's doing really well. Mm-hmm. You know, if he earns the job, play him. I don't think you automatically sit someone because they're inexperienced. Maybe he's a sub- quarterback savant. Maybe you know, if he's not ready, you definitely don't throw him out there when you've got a solid pro like Keenum for sure. I don't think. I think it's too early, even for Thais. Thaisman knows more about well, football until, than you and I ever will. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think. I think that's a bit too uh, just a bright line rule. Well, I think until we see. Um you know, some preseason action of all these guys. We're not going to really know. Um, no. But I understand where Joe's coming from because on principle, when I look at, you know, quarterbacks who have been successful in the league and, you know, all the little data points, because, you know, I'm, I'm, you and I both are spreadsheet nerds in a little bit of a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. When you really break it down, most successful quarterbacks don't play their full rookie year. They'll play right. part of it or they'll sit the whole bench like Tom Brady didn't play his rookie year very much. Um, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers didn't play for two years. Eli. Eli didn't play sat what six weeks, seven weeks. Some, some, yeah, because yeah, Kurt Kurt Warner was the quarterback. Right. And by the Theismann way, himself uh, didn't Kurt play. Warner it turned didn't. out to still be pretty good after that. Yeah, he did. He did. Uh, Theismann didn't play immediately. Right. Well, when, and he was know. sitting behind two Ring of Fame guys. You know. Yeah. Exactly. So um, I think you're right. In in principle, um, it helps players develop it does and particularly i think it's more apropos in today's world because there are so many more quarterbacks coming out early Mm -hmm. it used to be these guys would all play four years right or at least they would stay in college for four years for the most part they would all play 20 30 games as a start yeah yeah Nowadays, you have Haskins who would be like red shirt a year, then sit behind somebody a year, right. and then he played one season and he comes out as a junior. He's barely played. Right. I love Haskins. I talked about it. I thought he was the best quarterback in the draft. Right. Love him. But it's a lot of inexperience. And so I think, really and truly, I think you give sort of the preliminary head nod to Keenum. Mm-hmm. But if Haskins proves he earns the job, if, if let him have he's it. better, then he, yeah. he's better. Uh, and I know you're not a. Madden football guy or, you know, you don't play like the video, but you know how like you always have little like numbers one through a hundred on every skill set. I mean, yeah, I've never understood who, where those come from. It's like some PFF nonsense. Well, I mean, they make them up kind of as they go along when they do it. But (laughs) if you look at Haskins number in your own head and say, well, he's, you know, accuracy is a five and Keenum's a four. 
you know, uh, how, that's what the coaches almost have to do. They need to really look at these guys at all the different things they do well and figure out is Haskins really ready to start over because they're probably about the same caliber overall. Like they're both, let's say, a B plus overall or something. I don't know about that. Maybe not a B plus, but I, I think overall they're B. But is the experience that Keenum has going to be more valuable than Haskins' raw talent? That's what it comes. Yeah, because Haskins' raw talent is light years ahead of Keenum. His arm, oh yeah, yeah, his size, all that stuff. Haskins has a better you know, arm I, than anyone we've probably drafted in the last fifteen years. Uh, yeah, I, I maybe would, not RG three, but I mean, I think he's got a stronger RG3's arm than RG three. Maybe not as accurate off the bat, but yeah. Yeah, um, but it, yeah, I, I think Haskins obviously is. I mean, this isn't you know great insight, but Haskins' biggest problem is adjusting to the NFL yeah. more than anything. You and know, and, where, and we talk that is where sitting yeah, will help. Yeah, exactly right. I, you know, I'm just in no rush, and particularly since they've got a gauntlet to walk in the pat in the first quarter of the season. The Redskins are playing have a tough quarter. The first half of the season is harder than the second half, generally sure. speaking, and so it seems to me to make the most sense. Uh, I mean. Jay might not agree with this because Jay's job's on the line. Um, you know, but you sit Haskins for a while. You get through the tough part of the season. You let him learn for a while. And uh, then you throw the man out there. And if the Redskins are doing really well under Keenum, yeah, then, you then just leave him. Let, him then let, let Keenum play. Let yeah. it roll. Yeah, let it ride. But if the season really goes to hell in a handbasket, um, uh, you know, uh, throw him out there at some point after he's sat and kind of adjusted. I mean, I think the ideal – dream situation for me would be Keenum plays well and you, you basically start him for 16 game, games but you find spots for Haskins to get a few r- series in here and there you know bring him along here and there in garbage time yeah, yeah. maybe that, yeah. that would be the yeah. ideal ideal way I think to bring along any quarterback you know because the, the worst thing to do for sure would be throw him out there immediately have him be bad because he's adjusting right and, to and then destroy his out. confidence have him replaced right that would be a disaster. Right. He, That's the last he, thing. Once you he's want. in, you can't pull him out. You gotta, yeah, you gotta leave him in because that's like a Jets thing, to right? Do, when you, you once know? you put the rookie in, he's in for the next three years, forever. Yeah, You're exactly right. So I just think it, it's wise to take it slow. Mm-hmm. But if he proves to be some quarterback savant, you know, throw him out there if he's ready, but only if he's right. ready. And, and Joe, I think Joe had Joe's coming know, heart in the right a place. 19, a 1970s mentality. That's what he was doing. Yeah, kind of so. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it, though. I mean, it would. I'd rather have him sit for a year than mm-hmm. start week one when he's not ready. Right. You know, if those are your choices. Right. But the, and to, to get back to the original point, I mean, reality says no matter what you guys think, that the owner and Bruce Allen are going to have a say in this. Right. Because they just are, and that's just the truth, and you're just going to have to get over it. You know, I, we don't know. We're not in Redskins Park like that nobody is we don't know the meetings they have right. we don't know even the, the guys dynamics who are there the as reporters don't get to be in those kind know. of situations no i mean we don't know the dynamics of those meetings right. who knows um let's just hope it would make sense to let the football guys football you know right <laughs> it would make sense it, you know it, it would be the ideal situation to let the guys who actually played professional football make more decisions than <laughs> A yeah. guy who was a punter at Richmond and a guy who I don't even think, you know, played anything above flag football. He's not football. an athlete at all. Yeah, I don't think he's an athlete. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jake Gruden is the head coach of this football team. Right. He ought to have – his voice ought to be the and most important And he knows something voice. about quarterback. <laughs> yeah, and he's a quarterback dude. Yeah. A quarterback guy. So, But whoever the head coach is, whether it's anybody, the head coach, it ought to be his call – um, right. But just reality says the owner is going to owner's going to want to dictate sometimes, and Dan Snyder in particular has done it many times. There was a guy named Jeff George in the nineties who was only on this team. I try because... and black him out, and you keep bringing him up. Every <laughs> once in a while. You know they had. Let's not forget Brad Johnson. Right was a uh, it was a Pro Bowl level quarterback for the Redskins who got replaced mm-hmm. by Jeff George. Yeah. Jeff George being a terrible. Did, didn't quarterback Brad Johnson who... lead the league in passing yards the year before yeah, he replaced yeah. yes, him? Yes, he did. Isn't that right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, and Dan had this hard on for Jeff George because George has got like the biggest arm in NFL right. history. I didn't. I didn't understand it. Brad Johnson didn't have a bad arm either. That was the weird thing. No, but that was yeah. That was that was in the early days when Dan just didn't really didn't know what right. he was doing. Also, kind of the, the quarterback is, dark ages too. Yeah, you know, but that but the more recent example, of course, is is um, RG three. Mm-hmm. Now, I I don't think anybody will ever really know the, all the dynamics of how that happened because if you believe 
one side of the story, Mike Shanahan never really wanted him. Right. You know, and it was a – who knows? But Mike but Shanahan never is, mentioned it until after he was a bust, so – yeah. yeah, exactly. So I don't know who – Mike Shanahan is a freaking liar yeah. too, so I don't believe either one of them. Point is that situation certainly had owner dynamics in it. it That's did. my point. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I'm kind of out of steam on this whole when will Haskins start thing for now. Out of steam? We could talk about this forever. Well, Haskins – Let's not. I though. mean we have other things we can talk about though. We have two we other topics for the day, Steve, and we're we about do. a quarter right. into the show or a third into the show, so <laughs> – why don't we change up and uh, get to that listener poll, and that'll lead us okay. into the you know position group breakdown for the week. All right, we always do a poll because we need content, mm-hmm. and we appreciate you know we we do like to interact with you guys. But just to be perfectly honest, we need content this time of year. Yeah, I, I um, feel like maybe so, we should have done two polls. You know, just to <laughs> maybe something totally different. Yeah, because yeah. we had a whole other idea for the poll that I just ignored it too. We could have done two polls. Yeah. Um, okay, so the question this week was, since Ruben Foster is out for the season, we're doing inside linebackers for the position group right. breakdown. Hint, hint. A lot of the times from. we just pull about whatever position group we're going to do. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a way to get into the topic. Yes. So the question is, since Ruben Foster is out for the season, who do you think the Redskins should, as opposed to will, start at inside linebacker in Ruben's place for this year? Mm-hmm. So the options I put down are Sean Deon Hamilton, John Bostick, Josh Harvey Clemens, or the ubiquitous other. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, Alex, what do you think the fans voted for, and who do you think should start and place Ruben Foster? Um, well, because there's so many darn names on the list um, who we couldn't fit because of the constriction, I'm going to say the fans went yeah. other. Okay. Um, maybe they didn't agree on who the other should be, but I'm going to just guess they said other. Um, and I'm assuming some idiot wrote Mason Foster and because they didn't think it through, you know. <laughs> That's got to be in there, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the idea here was that Mason's already Mason a starter, Foster's right? the Mike backer, yeah. and um, Foster was going to be the what the Redskins call the Jack backer, which is the weak side pursuit guy. Right. So the idea here was that you knew ahead of time that Mason Foster was but, going but to am, be the Mike. Just guessing, did we get any responses with Mason Foster? Yeah, of course. All right, so I'm right about that. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, my my uh, I really like. Um, Two guys, but I'll, I'll say Sean Dion Hamilton from that list would be my every down guy. Um, okay. But, you know, just I went through and watched some film. I still can't get over my love for Josh Harvey Clemens. <laughs> I, the Redskins don't agree. I know. You. I know they don't. But I really love Josh Harvey Clemens for some reason. <laughs> he might be your new crush. You might have he, to He might be my defensive crush na- these days. <laughs> you might have to start dating Josh instead of Matt. Well, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay, so – your view of the fans was completely wrong. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, they that the the other was actually in last place. Really? Huh? <laughs> By a long shot. Yeah, Sean Dion Han- Sean Dion Hampton was the runaway winner here, seventy two percent. Wow. And, we can, and considering it was a really slow time of the year, we got a decent amount of votes for this. Yeah, I saw so the number I of think votes. This, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good considering it's late June, and so I think this is a fair, pretty good view of what the fans really think. Um, so he seventy two percent. Um, John Bostick got 16%. Uh, Josh Harvey Clemens got 8%, and only 4% voted other. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, a little bit surprising. I mean, for me, I think Sean D.M. Hamilton's obvious answer. Yeah, well, um, I mean, he's here. the most proven, so it makes a lot of sense. Well, John Bostick is probably the most proven. But well, I'm talking on our own roster. <laughs> yeah, internally. exactly. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get very many comments today, in, in this time, but we'll, we'll read a few All right. here. Um, Chris Brown. And let's hope this is not Chris Brown, the singer, because I don't really want him on the show because he's kind of a scumbag. So I'm going to assume this is a, another Yeah, I'm going to say Chris somebody Brown else. For, and this appears to be a middle-aged white guy. So let's assume that that's not Chris <laughs> Brown, the singer. He says, he asks a question. So hence, you know, hashtag content. He answered a question says, with not, a question. How Jewish yeah. are you? All right. <laughs> I don't know if he's Jewish. Well, he didn't have know. a big nose. Um, so not so much he says not so much an opinion as a question. Does Ryan Anderson have the body and skill set to move from outside linebacker to inside linebacker? He certainly seems to have the leadership chops and the smarts to make a great defensive signal call, which is something you and I have both pointed out yeah. many times. Um, it's not a bad thought, and and I wanted to save this to talk about it on the show, Chris, because I think I, I've often wondered. If he's not a better inside linebacker than outside linebacker, we talked about he, that. I mean, he doesn't have the week. speed to rush from the outside. We know that. 
he's got a big body, right. you know, I mean, I've kind of wondered if he could be a, a mic backer, like a signal caller inside, you know, between the tackles, like just go, run in, yeah. try and stop the rusher every time. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. know if he could do it every down. I would love to see him get a few tr- cracks at it. Yeah. We, he is underutilized <laughs> because uh, I think they just don't know what position to put him in. Yeah, I think so. So I think Chris, you make a big, a good point. So I don't know if he'd be um, a starter. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's a thought. Yeah. You know, uh, the big, the original Big Willie, who's at born to born to HDTR, gives the most obvious answer ever. He says the one that earns it. Oh, thanks. yeah, yeah. Thanks for the all the creative thought. Thank in you. There. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see here. It's okay. That, that you know, I know it's Twitter, so I'm not really upset about it or anything. But that's kind of like just run the ball, you know, like, all right. Yeah, uh-huh. it's kind of a cop out. But we appreciate your comment anyway. Yeah. Just do try and do a better job. Creative coming up thinking. With more more creative content. thinking, Big yeah. Willie. Yeah, because remember, it's hashtag content. Right. Okay. Uh, Tim Meek, who's at Indie Skins Fan Tim, says, Bostick on early downs and Sean Dion Hamilton in passing situation doesn't have to be one guy. Bostick is an upgrade over Ruben Foster on those early downs. I don't know about that. Uh, the number and tape show it. Ruben was nothing more than potential. Yeah. Then potential. He meant you meant than Tim. Um, Ruben is nothing more than potential. He's proved nothing at the NFL out, level outside of the ability to be hurt. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with but that's that. His actually, opinion. I respect your opinion. I don't agree with that at all. But that's your opinion. Yeah, it, I, I, I appreciate the question, but I disagree with uh, Sean Dean Hamilton on coverage. I think if you're, yeah. you know, he's also very much of a Mike linebacker for us. Like he. He's better stopping the run than going into cover. Well, I mean, Deion Hamilton replaced Zach Brown last year. He did. I, I think yeah, he can kind of but do both. I, I, he, I kind of agree with you. That may be his role. His better role ought to be the Mike. Yeah. But, I mean, I think the Reds can see him as having. Uh, I, yeah, I don't think he's, you know, Brown or, you know, Ruben yeah. Foster level speed, though. Yeah, and I don't agree, Tim, that Ruben has shown nothing more than potential. He actually was an outstanding linebacker when he was in the game there for San Francisco. He just kept getting into <laughs> legal problems. That's all. <laughs> he can't, you know. It, yeah, he keeps getting, he keeps beating his girlfriend. Right. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Rory King says, "If Hamilton is healthy, he has the most talent. On top of knowing the defense better than Bostic, I've been a Bostic fan since college too, so it was a hard choice." So. Um, that's a flavor of the comments again. That we're By the way, how many of our inside linebackers went to Alabama at this point? <laughs> a lot. Uh, no, uh, one, two, three, four, right? Am I wrong? Is it four of these guys? No, no, no that can't be right. So, um, uh, Ruben Foster. Yeah. Sean Dion Hamilton. Right. John Bostic went to Alabama, right? No. Where'd he go? John Bostic is not an Alabama guy. He's a Florida guy. Oh, okay. If you want to go to outside linebacker, yeah, no, that's it. No, Ryan Anderson. So if you want to look at the linebacker group as a whole, there's three. Okay, all right. We're we're talking about inside guys yeah, today, yeah, yeah. but throw throw Anderson in there. Uh, yeah, it's an inside. It's an interesting thought. So that's the poll this week. Thanks everybody who voted and and comment and all that. And yeah, Tim, I make fun of you, but actually we do appreciate we, you commenting. We, and I would like more people to answer questions with questions. Actually, I I, I made fun of that too, but I, I actually like we need more questions asked of us. So. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah, feel free to ask. You yeah. know, we'll make up. We'll, we'll we'll babble and make up an answer to anything. Yeah, and we're good at that. We might actually do research. We might actually do some research into I don't it. Know about that. If you catch me on a good day, I'm going to research it. Right. <laughs> if you really catch my attention on something, because this happened, the entire reason why I did a Tim Settle article two weeks ago was we had a one of the commenters emailed us and said, "Hey, can you do? Here's an idea. Do Tim Settle." And you know what? I did it. Mm-hmm. So you might just. Catch me on a good day and have me put like a billion hours into doing right. those because that now, takes a billion hours. Now to be to be fair, we also get a probably thirty or forty suggestions for things to do on our website that we don't do for every one that we do. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And most of yeah most of them we ignore. Right. But I thought that one was going to point is if you have a good idea, let us. By the know. way, if an, if another person's like, well, I don't like your T-shirt designs. Well, you come up with something. You know. Or better yeah. yet, just screw yeah. you. Yeah. Well, or that. <laughs> Yeah, you don't like our T-shirt designs. I don't care. Right. <laughs> it doesn't. You, especially the guy you're talking about. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into the actual inside linebacker group position breakdown thing that we love. Because I like insulting our listeners and, and we, commenters, uh, but yeah. we need to get away from okay. it. Okay. 
Um, Ruben Foster, let's just mention real quick, IR. So, you know, not much going to be seen from him this year, obviously. Nothing going to be seen from him this year. Yeah, you know what was interesting about him is I did some bit of research on him. He didn't run the 40 at the combine, if you recall, because he got thrown out of the combine for bad behavior. But he's kind of a four six guy. I would have thought he was faster. Really? But, huh. Yeah, he, yeah, he's in the four six range. Well, uh, now with the injury, it's probably going to be more of a four seven. Yeah. Now, if you want um, some stats on him, because that's what we do. Yeah. Um, Spreadsheet he's nerd. A two, yeah, he's a two year vet, right? right. He drafted in two thousand seventeen. He's only played sixteen games mm-hmm. because of a combination of injury and suspension. So he's really played a full season. One, the equivalent of one full season, one hundred and one tackles. 84 solo in a, what amounts to a full rookie season. That's a pretty darn good. That's I mean, you know, from a that's what you want from a starting linebacker. Any anything yeah. over 100 tackles is good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, but if you want to talk X's and O's, I, I think he definitely is a pursuit guy. Yes. I don't think you want. He's not big enough to get too caught up in traffic, and you don't want him facing down some big fat guard like Will Hernandez. No. You know, you want him to be able to pursue, and that's what he's best at. Now, the fear, of course. He really tore his knee up good on like in the first thirty seconds of the first day of the first OTA session, right. and so your fear is that he doesn't come back from that with the same amount of explosiveness as he had. Right. You know, hopefully, keep your fingers crossed. Um, you know, so that's the fear. I, I still have a bit of a problem with him even being on the roster. I, I do too. I mean, I, I, like I, I, I'm, I, I try and not, you know, mention it too much, but I, I, I still don't necessarily believe all everything. You know, as they say it happened. So, well, yeah, I mean, for those of you who think that Ruben Foster was exonerated because he wasn't prosecuted, you don't know what you're talking about. You've never been around criminal justice and you have no idea. He was not prosecuted because they could not come up with evidence, right. probably because this girl is a psycho liar, okay, who is probably trying to protect his her meal ticket. And so she refused to tell. This happens all the time. These women will get abused, and they will not testify. We're seeing, this is not the first time. We're seeing similar things happen in Kansas City. With uh, Exactly you know. right. Tyree Kill is on record threatening her. Right. You need to be afraid of me, too. The woman is screaming that about her son uh, how your son is afraid. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, she's not willing to testify, and they have to let the case go. This happens all the time. So if anybody out there thinks Ruben Foster is an innocent shirub, Right. You know, who's poor, abu- you know, who's just abused by the system for race, whatever reason, you don't know what you're talking no. about. I he, promise you. Uh, he, I, I mean, listen, we don't know fully what happened either. Well, well no. I'll, I'll say that just in art of, in fairness. You know, it's not like we were there, but, no. y- you know, it, it, I, I'm, I'm just not I, touching it. I've been around enough criminal cases to know. To know that this see. isn't hunky-dory. Yeah. yeah. No, I know, you know, I'd put money on it, it just the, the the witness is is a terrible witness she's a pro she's right. a, is so a liar can't, you can't prosecute you just, it. you're gonna lose and you can't prosecute yeah. it that's what it is nobody thinks that except you weirdos out there think he's just totally innocent. right Crazy. all right okay, well let's so, move on since he's okay. on ir anyway and i don't want to spend too much time on him um let's talk about the other foster mason who mason foster surprise of the off season to me that he's actually still in the <clears> roster I kind of thought the writing was on the wall that they were going to let him go, one with all the nonsense with, between him and the fans, you know. But that's secondary to yeah. production wasn't there. He, he's starting to make a little more money than he's probably worth for what he produces, and the team was getting young guys like Sean Dan Hamilton in, who could, you know, really start taking the reins over at inside linebacker. So I'm surprised he's still on the roster. You know what I heard about him? What's that? He's lost weight. Interesting. And that would mean that he's trying to increase his speed, right? Because he's not fast. No, he, he was never a quick guy, and he's getting older. He, he's got. He ran four seven five in the combine in two thousand eleven. Right. So he's slow, and you see that on film. The man is slow by football right. standards. He's an inside so, lose, so inside linebacker. Like, yeah. you can't expect him to go sideline to well, sideline. I, losing a little weight would probably be good for yeah. him. So I, that's what I've heard about him. Um, Classic way I that think his guys extend a career. Yeah, but his lack of burst and agility cost him so money, mm. so much on film. You know, it just time after time after time, he just could not get there. Right. Um, you know, and and I think he's not the best, always the best decision maker. <laughs> Sometimes he makes weird decisions, mm-hmm. but I think more with Mason Foster, 
uh, is more about his speed and agility more than anything. And if he loses a little bit of weight and gets some of that back, I'm all for yeah. it. You know, I don't think they cut. And, and from a salary cap perspective, by the way, he's got a four point two five million dollar cap hit um, with almost very little dead cap. So I mean, he would be a big savings. Yeah, I'm, that, that, I'm sorry. I, no, I said that wrong. I'm sorry. Cut. You yeah, know, I thought yeah. they maybe so, maybe would have done that to yeah free up some raw, uh, free up some money for other people. But yeah, yeah. Um, not you know, I think a lot of fans got really anti Mason Foster after that whole leaked tweet thing or whatever that was last year. It didn't bother me too much. I don't. Usually, that stuff bothers me. It didn't really bother. Yeah, me. It, I, don't know why. I mean, I understand why they're frustrated. They, that was during the losing streak. You know. Yeah. I I don't blame anyone for being frustrated at that point. I, I, well, the one thing I didn't like. Well, first, let me back up. The Redskins don't care if you insult the fans. No. The Redskins care if you insult the Redskins. Right. <laughs> As DJ Swearinger can attest, correct. You know that's what they care about. The Redskins front office doesn't so much care about the fans in, in stuff like this. Uh, I don't want to say they never care about the fans, but I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> you know, we're not. On the top I'll say of the it. They never list. care. Yeah, they, we're not on their priority list. So Mason insulted the fans. What I didn't like about Mason's thing was he didn't take responsibility for it. Really, mm-hmm. he said, "Well, oh, you know, somebody." Did it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Even if your cousin did it, it's your account. You're responsible, period, dot, the end. You should have come out and said, I was stupid. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I love you guys. Foster had been a good, you know, fan, you know, interacting type yeah. before then. I, I don't blame – I mean, I didn't blame him for being frustrated because some people out there were incredibly rude to this man. Oh, yeah. When you read I mean, some it, of people's comments towards him, awful. awful. Some of you guys need to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. I mean, he would like post pictures of his kids, you know, because he's got, I think, a, one or two sons, and people and, would just uh, write they horrible would, things. Yeah, yeah, it's just terrible. So I don't blame him for being frustrated. Here's my advice to it, actually all fans: don't at players. Just don't. Like, it, there's nothing good that will come from you trying to interact with these guys. No, well, I, yeah, I mean, and it's kind of, I, you know, the whole purpose I think of Twitter in this regard, at least. I mean, in some regards, the purpose of Twitter has become to shadow banning conservatives, but we'll get a, we'll get away from that. Um, you know, people like the idea that they can interact with their favorite celebrities, even if the celebrity never reads right. it. You know, I can, I can just tell you from like our game days mm-hmm. on Twitter, we, we there's no way we can keep up with all the comments, oh, no, right? No, no. And so, if you're like somebody like Mason Foster or like way bigger, they don't read any of these comments. It's just way, way, way too many. But it makes people feel good that they can kind of mm-hmm. send a message to a player. I mean, I get that, but just be respectful, right. man. I mean, you don't need to insult <laughs> people's kids, you know, and say just horrible things to these people. I mean, legitimate criticism is one thing, but... Yeah, kids always I, I crosses a line as they learned in Kansas yeah. City this week uh, with that DJ. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, let's move on to... Because uh, okay. we've got a bunch of guys on the list here for inside yeah. linebacker. Uh, okay. Let's go to the guy who won the poll, Sean Deon Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton. This is, what, his second okay. season now coming in? And second season. He played a lot during the last season towards the end. Uh, yeah. I, I watched him... F- film of him or just to kind of refresh my memory and you know i know you say he's good in coverage i still see him as more kind of like mason foster where you want him between the tackles going after the running back first uh he's he's very good at finding the right spot the right hole to get into to make the stop on the running game um i think that's kind of where his strength really is i don't think he's necessarily great in coverage i just sort of mean that i think he's maybe the best we have in coverage. I don't necessarily think he's great in coverage. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I like Deion Hamilton. I think he's a smart guy. Mm-hmm. He's He is definitely is a smart guy. And I think they, you know, but for his injury, the Redskins kind of got a steal. Right. You know, because don't forget that part of the reason why he dropped to the sixth round is because he was injured, it, you know. Yeah. That's also why he didn't play yeah, a lot in the first half of the year. Yeah, I, I think the Redskins see him as a potential starter in spite of the fact that he's a six-round draft. I absolutely see him so that way, high personally, yeah. They have high hopes for him. And as I mentioned before, when Zach Brown went off the rails mm-hmm. last year, um, Deion Hamilton was the guy who replaced him. Yeah. You know, and so he can – I think he can do both inside linebacker roles. I, I think he's this kid has got a bright future, six foot 235. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he he started four games last year. Which, again, were the Zach Brown craziness games. Yeah, yeah. Toward, they're um, all the last four games, I believe. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> if Stats-wise, he had 27 total yeah. uh, tackles, 19 solo, 1.5 sacks. Um, 
you know, he didn't, he only did the bench press in the combine. So, but I mean, he played, um, he was really a three, he played, he really played three years at Alabama. Mm -hmm. So he's an experienced guy. I like him. Um, I think someday he's our future. I mean, the idea would be Dion Hamilton and Ruben Foster are the future. <laughs> that's the idea. Yeah. I don't, and I don't even know if that's long term the idea, but because I, I also think inside linebackers, no, just it might be position. a 2020, yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be a 2020. I, I don't think future. that this team, the way we're constructed, they're going to ever have like a franchise linebacker on the inside. Like, I think that's just not a high money position for us. So, you know, just um, historically speaking, we don't spend a lot of money there as in the three, four. Yeah, that's true. So that's true. I, I mean, there's something to be said for having the middle of the field be exp be solid mm -hmm. blue chip type players. Right. And so if you go inside defensive tackle, middle linebacker safety, yeah. You know, I mean, and so we've got the the defensive line kind of set. You've got Landon Collins as safety. They need to find a free safety. Right. You know, but if they could find a, sort of the big Pro Bowl guy at middle linebacker, if it's Reuben Foster, if someone else, I mean, it would help the team. But you're right. I think I, I just look Redskins, at where we've spent our money in yeah. the last eight years. It's never really been a lot of spending on linebackers compared to. No, they spent a lot of money on defensive backs, yeah, the DBs, <laughs> outside linebackers. That's where. And you know, I think yeah. that all started with Hasley. That's how he wanted to run in the three four. So yeah, we, we've kind I of just so. continued it. Um, I think all so. right. In terms of other guys who were here last year, the last guy I think on the list was Josh Harvey Clemens, um, okay. who's not really the traditional inside linebacker. Uh, he plays that the money back, as people love to call it. Yes. More of a hybrid linebacker safety role. Um, Good range. I think he's actually pretty good in coverage when you watch him play. Um, he, I don't remember. I didn't look up his stats. So I don't remember what. I know he had a couple good games here and there. Um, okay, yeah. so stats wise, he was active for ten games in 2017, and in it's all 16 in 2018, he had 22 tackles last year, 18 solo, uh, 11 tackles. In 2017, so he says 33 com combined tackles in two years. He's six four two thirty. The reason why you see he's good in coverage is that that was his collegiate background. Yeah. Don't forget, he was a that this guy was drafted. Yeah. yeah, was drafted as a safety. Um, I think the Redskins like this money ball, you know, sort of backer, and, and really what that is is it's it's a hybrid. You know, it's really kind of an in the box outside. It's an in the box, but not really in the defensive backfield. Right. You know that's kind of how you sort of see it. If you look at, if you look it's at based off of Buddy Ryan's film, four six is what it is. If you really want to think about it, kind of yeah, sort of. I mean, the four six is really forty six is really a four three setup with a single high safety, and then you bring the strong safety in the box. But what they did is they rotated a linebacker over to the weak right. side. You know, in that kind of you know, uh, middle space, so to speak. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, that's, I don't know if the Redskins like this guy too much to be perfectly honest with you. I, I'm not sure how they feel about him one way or the other, but I, I just know when you see him in coverage, he, he stays on his guy pretty well, uh, which, you know, that's something none of our linebackers do. Um, sure. Outside of like just playing the flats, he, he can actually, you know, cover a tight end from time to time. He just didn't get many snaps no. though. No, he doesn't, and I, I don't know if that's just we're not using formations where he's in the right package or what it is, because you're never going to put him out, down as an every down back. Uh, well, don't forget they've tried this before. Yeah. I mean, the Sua Cravens' role was this, right? But that failed Sua, obviously because of Sua Cravens. Yeah, and so and so Josh Harmy Clemens kind of inherits the role, but the Redskins have just never they've. Tr they don't really embrace it on a regular no, basis. They don't. They, I guess I'd say it. Like that, that's that. a fair point. I just don't. I don't know if that's a we don't you know create plays well, for this position kind of thing. I, I, you know that, that's a coaching. Allow thing, me partly. to go out of order a little yeah. bit here. B.J. Blunt, who is one of the linebackers, right. could be Josh Harvey Clemens' replacement. You think okay? so? When, when did uh, he? Yes. When did he come along for the Redskins? Well, he's an undrafted free agent this he year. He is okay. I couldn't he's remember new. if he yeah, was BJ... from last year or not. No, he's not. He's six one, two hundred twenty pounds out of McNeese State. Okay, he's undersized. He's really not linebacker sized. He's really more safety size. Mm -hmm. um, but he's known as a speed guy. Um, he's never going to be 
inside middle linebacker. He, Mason Fox. Mason Fox has got thirty pounds on on him. Okay? Yeah, he's a but, small um, guy comparatively speaking. Yeah, he. They brought him here to be a hybrid linebacker safety, and so I think. If Josh Harvey Clemens has competition for a roster spot, it's with B.J. Mm. Blunt. And, and, and um, Hogs Haven, our friends at Hogs Haven did a pretty good profile of him. So if you want to go there, search that right, out. Right. It's from Fe- February 26th. Um, but that's – I think B.J. Blunt is probably Josh Harvey Clemens. Um, competition. Competi- can't, yeah. yeah, I do. Because, I mean, Harvey Clemens was a seventh-round draft pick, so they don't have yeah, no, no, I'm, I, They'll cut him in a I, I by no means am going to say that he should be starting or anything. I just think, you know – I like the idea of that kind. Of, I've always liked the idea of that kind of player. I, it's just you got to figure out how to use them. Yeah, yeah. Is is Josh your official new man crush over over Matt? No, no. I mean, I'm still Doxon's still my number one man crush on the defense of all time. Uh, of Doxon, yeah, Josh Doxon. He, he's always been on the my defense. One. Yeah. You mean wide receiver, Josh? Oh, I'm sorry, Doxon? not Josh Doxon. Why did I say Doxon? <laughs> I don't know. Quentin Dunbar. That's why I'm trying to figure I, out. I, I don't oh, know why Quentin I said Dunbar. Dunbar. I'm in Dunbar. <laughs> Quentin Dunbar. Yeah. Dunbar's always been my number one man crush. Yeah, that's another topic for another right. day. Uh, but that's Josh Harvey Clemens, and that's also BJ Blunt. Again, six foot, two hundred twenty pounds. You probably never heard of him. Um, you're not going to find a lot on him. He didn't go to the combine. No. From McNeese State, but I'm just telling you, this guy is the. It's going to come down to whoever plays better special teams. Yeah, that's what it's going to come. That's exactly yeah. right. He's known as a speed guy. You don't want him inside. Which you really, the only role he's going to have is as this money ball, money backer guy. Yeah. So, and, and you know, if yeah, you're actually right. asking about the whole man crush thing, that's what I, I have more of a man crush on the idea of a money backer than an actual player. You know. I'm just. Te- yeah. I hope you don't. I'm just teasing you. I don't actually think Matt. If people. I don't actually think Matt Ionitis and, uh, uh, is in a yeah. in a relationship with Alex. I really don't actually think that. I, I don't think anyone actually thinks you think that. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, if if on. you're, one of your alma maters ever actually had somebody drafted, I would do the same thing to you. But one of them has literally <laughs> never had anybody drafted. I don't think. Well, no. Well, I, yeah, I don't want to get into my no, alma no. mater here, but we have had some NFL players. It's just no one for the Redskins. Happen. I know that. <laughs> no, no one for yeah. the Redskins. All right, so uh, where do you want to go? I, I was going to say Bostic, Bostic or Holcomb. Bostic. Bostic. No, no, Bostic. You want to go Bostic first? All right. Bo- yeah, Bostic, six one, two hundred forty-five pounds. Bostic is a guy who's been around for a while. He's kind of a bust. Okay, he was a, six, a second round draft pick of the Bears, two thousand. 13. Um, he's never really been a full-time starter. He was brought here, if you recall, after Reuben Foster got hurt. Right. He was sort of the best veteran, knows what he's doing, knows how to play football type guy they could find. I don't think anybody thinks that he's going to mysteriously become some kind of great player. He did start the past two years in Indiana, mm-hmm. Indianapolis, and then they cut him, and then he started last year. He was a full-time starter for the Steelers last year, and then they let him go. You know, So that ought to tell you something, that there's two shots they've got to start, neither team captain. Right. And, you know, uh, you know, like you hear people say this all the time, the NFL is full of linebackers like this. Bossick could probably start for you and still get 80 to 100 tackles, no problem. He had 97 tackles for the Colts in 2017. Right. So, like, I, I don't think he's not a capable option. I just – he, you know, he's not a playmaker. Again, you said they drafted him, what, second round? Second round. And will be his third team in four years or something. That's – so – Well, the, he was also with the Patriots for a blink of a Oh, so fourth too. team in four years. Right. Yeah, so that's – there's something going that on there that's something. a flag. I'm not sure what. It tells you that he's not very good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, by NFL standards, you know, but I mean, look, the Redskins were desperate because if it's not, you know, they needed a veteran. Yeah, they did. You they know, need. They had. They need competition. Yeah, they didn't have anybody. They had Sean Dean Hamilton, and that's mm-hmm. it. And then a bunch of undrafted free agents, and you know, they had to have somebody like. Well, Boston. they and they do have the guy we're going to get to next, and that's Cole Holcomb, who we drafted this year. Yeah, and uh, I know some people after we drafted him got really excited about him because. Uh, like some of these other guys, just a high tackling machine. Uh, I, I think he had a hundred tackles a year every year in college. Is that right? Approximately, yeah. yeah he's from North Carolina. Um, you know, he was a uh, fifth round draft pick. Um, he is six one, about two hundred thirty pounds. Really, a three year full time starter at North Carolina. Right. One hundred fifteen tackles in two thousand sixteen, ninety three in two thousand seventeen, and then one hundred and four in two thousand eighteen. So he's averaging, you know, you know, a tad over a hundred. 
you know, he's averaging like 106, 107, you know, no, that's not right. 322. Yeah. He's averaging a bit over a hundred. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but that's what you, you want. Know, I you like, want production. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like Cole Holcomb. I, you know, I, I think he's got a feature here. Right. Um, he's one of these high, I think he's a high character. Uh, yeah. You know, well, we only draft guys who are team captains, so that always helps. Yeah. Well, that and Reuben Foster. Well, we <laughs> didn't draft Reuben Jimmy Foster. Moreland, Jimmy Moreland's no saint either. Yeah. You know, there's a couple of them. But point is, I, I like Cole Holcomb. I think they like Cole Holcomb. Um, you know, whether or not he can step in and, you know, play a big role in his first year. I mean, even at the inside linebacker group, right. probably unlikely. Probably, probably you know, starts gonna... on special teams because, uh, you know, yeah. for those who don't know, a lot of your special teamers play inside linebacker. Just – it's the nature of what yeah. they do. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I can't get too excited about any fifth round pick, I guess, <laughs> particularly. I mean, you know, Cole Holcomb, he's there. Right. He does have experience on special teams. He did play some special teams in college. So, um, you know, that's All right. Him. So I do. I think he's going to play a big role. No. no, probably not. So then we have two guys left, uh, Marquise Flowers and Ankra Andrew. Or Andrew Ankara? Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Ankara. Yeah, let's start with Marquise okay. Flowers. <clears throat> Marquise Flowers, 6'2", 245 pounds, six-round draft pick of the Bengals in 2014. A little bit smaller at 245 compared to some yeah. of the guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's kind of right in there. I mean, he's you know a tiny bit smaller than Mason Foster. He's traditional middle linebacker. <laughs> you know, again, I mean, he's obviously moved around <laughs> um, some. You know, I, I mean, New England's the type of team that, brings guys in and if they don't work out they just ruthlessly cut them <laughs> and that's what happened to him um i mean he has played some outside linebacker so he's the type of guy that has some versatility he was a db early in his career in arizona in college okay. so another so, one of these I money mean, backer possible types then it sounds like maybe maybe yeah possibly <laughs> um except i don't i don't think anybody should have you know high hopes necessarily for this guy um, you know, he was released by Detroit, you know, last year. Okay. I mean, let's, you know, take that into consideration. You know, he didn't play a full season. He got released in October last year. So, mm. um, I, he's a, this is another guy who's been around the NFL a while, who knows how the NFL works. Um, I don't think he's a starting quality player in any way, but if they get desperate, you know, he could be a rotational piece that at least knows how to play football at an NFL level. So that's about all you can I can say about Marquise Flowers. I don't know about you. You may have some. No, I, I don't have any profound infu- inference from anything I've read about him. So, you know, yeah. he's just a guy. He'll be there. He'll probably be gone after camp. That's my gut. Probably. Maybe you so. Know. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> um, okay, so last one, Ankara. Do you, Ankara. What did you read about him? Because I'm sure you've. Found something. You know, I always yep. do. Um, Andrew Ankrum is a local boy. Uh, went to James Madison. He is. Uh, he was really an outside linebacker. I threw him into our inside linebacker group on the site, on our uh, salary cap chart, because he has to go somewhere. <laughs> but the truth of the matter, he's 6'3", 240 pounds, roughly 244 right. pounds what he's listed at. Um, undrafted free agent, 2019 undrafted, obviously. Really an outside linebacker at James Madison. Um, you know, I, I mean, the Redskins sometimes have better insight into these local guys just because they've scouted them a lot more. What the book on him says is that he is fairly explosive. Um, he plays with a low center of gravity. Um, so that's a good thing. He's a project in terms of his technique. Um, I don't know if he really has the strength to, uh, really be an inside, inside line, like a Mike level inside linebacker. Right. Um, you know, they, he may be a guy who ends up on the outside more than the inside. Hmm. We'll have to see. <laughs> Interesting. So, so yeah, kind so of like a, not sure where he fits in situation. Yeah. I, we put him in the inside linebacker cause he has to go somewhere right. more than anything. So. So, Looking at this list Andrew. of linebackers, yeah. who, the guys who are here, the, the thing that kind of strikes me pretty quickly is, to me, it's there's less and less distinction between who's going to be the Mike versus the Jack on that roster than, you know, there there have been in years past. Like it, now that Ruben Foster's yeah, out, yeah, especially sure. now that Ruben's out. <laughs> um, but like when we had Brown, Brown was clearly a Jack, 
you know? Like, yeah. But I look at That's what Hamilton, I look at Foster, I look at or Mason Foster, I look at John Bostick and Cole Holcomb. They all strike me more kind of in that same mold of being more of a Mike inside linebacker. Um, which I think that's interesting. Like none of them really strike you as a high speed go sideline to sideline guy, at least not no. to me. What strikes me about this group overall is that there's a decided lack of talent. Uh, uh, yeah, um, there's a quick drop off. <laughs> yeah. The Redskins truly fell in. Think what you want about the p- personal aspects of Foster. Um, but they were really counting on him. You know, to play a role, he's was easily the most talented linebacker, right. in, inside linebacker on the team. And now that he's out, I mean, you've got Mason Foster, who didn't play well last year, you know, who's getting up there right. age-wise a little bit, at least for a linebacker. He, 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 he's slow. just a very average, like, if you're to draw a line yeah. of what the average is, it's him. I don't hate Mason Foster like some of you guys out there do. I mean, you know, I just criticize his play more than anything, and his play leaves something to be desired. Well, this man is an ingrained starter this year. And, actually, and on the field, I've liked competing him, with, like, not for his athlete, his play, but, like, the other aspects of it. Good game um, managing and stuff like that. Yeah, to a certain extent. But my point here is that I don't think Mason Foster is a starter on a championship no, team, for example. No, he's not. His competition are the likes of Cole Holcomb, B.J. Blunt, John Bostic, Andrew Ankra. Um, this team needs talent. They really need to start focusing on the inside linebackers. Uh, maybe Sean Dan Hamilton will be great. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe he will. And and again, like we said, the team likes him. I like him. But um, if something happens, if there's a couple more injuries in this group, they are in a world of hurt. <laughs> In the inside linebacker group. That's the problem because you really are going to see, like, John Bostic and Cole Holcomb, yeah. you know, <laughs> at some point if it really goes south. Um, so that ought to make you nervous. I, this, I'd say this, especially with um, Ruben Foster gone, this might be the group with the least talent on the entire team. On the de- uh, Well, on the balance team. On the defense, for sure. I'd say on the team. Name one that has got less you talent. You think this is less talented than our wide receiver group? Because that's I mean, all, that's going to be the big one, of course. Yeah, well, I mean, Paul Richardson is a or vet. guard. It depends on how. <laughs> okay, you got me on guard. <laughs> I mean, because we've got, we've got Brandon Scherf and nobody. So yeah, okay, guard. I don't know if I think it's I think it's a competition. I think between wide receiver and inside linebacker, kind of running neck yeah. and neck and talent. <laughs> but they've drafted a bunch of young guys on the wide receiver group. That's is true. the thing. I mean, Calvin Harmon, uh, Terry McLaurin, you know. Paul Richardson is the big money guy, so they have guys they're counting on. And the inside linebacker, we're counting on like Marquis Flowers. Well, I, I don't think know. we're. Can- I think he's going to be like a, you know, he'll make the roster if other people get hurt. I'm yeah. being facetious, yeah, yeah, yeah. but my point is, those are the type of guys we have. Um, I, this group can be a problem. I think it was a much uh, more devastating blow than people realize when Reuben Foster went out. That is why the coaching staff looked aghast. Yeah. yeah. You know, when it happened, because it was like, oh, my God, this was our all-pro guy potential. You know, that's I think that's how they saw yeah. him. I, I actually look at this group, and I kind of wonder if you need to kind of redesign how you're running your defense. Because you know how we run a lot of 2-4 uh, kind of nickel fronts now? Yes. I, I kind of yes. wonder if maybe you're better off just running three DTs out there and one less inside linebacker. <laughs> I mean, it depends on what the offense is doing. Yeah, you know? but, but talent-wise, you're better off. Your best players are not going to – if you were to say who the 11 best guys, it's not going to be a second linebacker from the inside. No, that's true. I mean, if you want to take like an NBA basketball approach and throw your best players out yeah. there, it ain't going to be it's an inside be linebacker. It's going to be a 3-3-5 defense, <laughs> yeah. really. Yeah, exactly, something, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I mean, it's more it's more complicated than we're yeah, making it seem, of course. But, but um, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with your point there. And, I, and this group really causes me great pause, mm-hmm. even with Reuben Foster. Because let's be honest, I mean, ignore the personal part of it and the legal part of it. They literally fell into right. it. You know, they didn't have a plan to acquire Reuben Foster. To I assume the plan if they, they fell into him. Brown, just keeping Brown. Who Brown again? Not great. The personal aspects of him aside, because I didn't much like his attitude. Uh, he had a lot more weaknesses than I th- thought. Considering how fast he was, he th- I think he should have been able to pursue much better and have been in better coverage. He just doesn't have it in him to be a good cover linebacker. You know, he doesn't. So I. 
I think this group needs a lot of attention for 2020 going forward, <laughs> just generally speaking. Yeah. You can't count on Sean Dean Hamilton to be, you know, a six round draft pick with an, with a, what was it, a shoulder? I forget Something what his like, I can't remember was. either, but yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, you can't count on him to be your, you know, Pro Bowl middle no, linebacker. He's not, not, none of those guys are Pro Bowl. I think that if you take Hamilton and Holcomb and Bostic and Harvey Clemens or whoever becomes the money backer. Yeah. You'll cobble together uh, enough starts and enough play time for that linebacker position uh, alongside yeah. Mason Foster, who I assume will just play every down. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, it's not ideal. But I mean, but like one or two injuries, sure. this group could oh, really yeah. be in a world yeah, of if, hurt. Well, if Mason Foster goes down, we're – It's a serious yeah. problem. And, and listen, if you're counting on Mason Foster to be your cornerstone, because right. Mason Foster is average. Right. At best, really, inside you know, linebacker, like our buddy he's Mark, like, better than cornerstone. Yeah, there, like our buddy Mark Tyler from Hogs Haven, who we communicate with yeah. regularly, doesn't think much. And and you know, like Mark is a coach. Mark knows what he's looking at better than you and yeah. I. And I mean, he does not think much of Mason Foster uh, in terms of his well, play on the field. So it's I, like it's, I said, there's there's probably twenty guys like Mason Foster in free agency still. You know, yeah, that, that's the nature of ba- John Bostic might be one of mm-hmm. them. John Bostic might be yeah, one of them exactly. He is. He, he's the same guy. Yeah that's, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, John Bostic, Mason Foster. Yeah, exactly right. So uh, in terms of starters, since we always predict starters, I'll just go ahead and say um, I think Mason Foster, obviously. And then you're going to see um, – I'm going to see Sean Dion Hamilton is going to be the starter, but you're going to see a lot of Bostic. I think that's your rotation. Foster, Hamilton, Bostic are going to be the three guys you see most. And then, yeah, I mean, between B.J. Bunt, Blunt and um, Josh Harvey Clemens, I don't know. I don't Some, have somebody will get Blunt that to know. spot of whatever yeah. you want to yeah. – I'm not going to pretend like I've watched a ton of no. B.J. Blunt film. I haven't. I don't and, know. and I'll be honest. I, I wish we could come up with a better name than Moneybacker. Like, I hate that nickname for some reason. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where that came I, from. It, it was uh, Arizona, I think, came up with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. No, you're right. That is um, it. No, you're right. But, okay, so my starters, Foster, yeah. Hamilton, yes. But I'm going to say Holcomb comes along and kind okay. of becomes the third guy, rotational guy. There's your wild card, yeah. people. Cole Holcomb. That's that's we'll a see. sad wild card. Mr. and Mrs. Holcomb agreed yes. you, with you, but maybe not too many well, other Well, maybe a bunch of NC State fans. There's got to be a lot of NC State Redskins fans, right? Probably so, yeah. yeah. The leftovers who, you know, the old, the, the older ones who didn't jump on the uh, Panthers right. bandwagon. Well. Did you see, by the way, the, the film of – we're totally getting off topic here, but the film of um, Cam Newton – on the plane. I, I heard this? about it. I didn't watch the video. <laughs> oh, this it's is so ridiculous. Great. So Cam Newton is coming back, is on, he's going to I don't know what airline. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he's coming back from okay. Europe, I think is what it was. And so he's got a coach seat. Now, Cam Newton is 6'5". It's so what he does. He comes on the plane and he offers cash to a dude sitting in first class. Right. He offers $1,500. But he only, yeah, and the guy laughs at him and says no, and so you see Newton kind of skulk, you know, you know his way to his seat. It, but it's let, like how I he mean, acts during every loss of their games. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> but if you're gonna try to, I mean, I admire his creativity, right. you know, but you gotta offer more than fifteen hundred bucks, man. Think well, about I mean, this: you're talking to a guy who is wealthy yeah. enough to fly first class. On an international flight, fifteen hundred dollars is not worth him moving back to coach. You got to offer him like five grand. I, to what, make that I don't know while. what a first class flight costs. Going, I can tell you. I mean, it's five or six thousand dollars. Going, going on, to international, uh, international, like international, that? Okay. international. Yes, yes because at least, the few times more. I've flown internationally, uh, which have been usually for like work, it's always been coach. So I've never, you know, well, and you know, vacation. Obviously, I'm going to be cheap. <laughs> so. I was I was fortunate enough, not on my dime, to sit first class on an international flight nice. once. And let me tell you, it is a much different experience. So point is, Cam, you had the right idea. But you lowballed You offered him. way too – you lowballed him. Yeah, you, way too little. You should have started but with like maybe five he was grand. Maybe you might not have – You know? <laughs> I don't even – five grand might not have even have done it for a guy like no. that. Because he's either really flies a lot and has frequent flyer miles to upgrade on an international right. flight, or he's just a wealthy dude who can afford it. One of the two. And either way, $1,500 is right. not attempt something Because like I don't know of many companies that do fly people first class uh, on that kind of thing. I mean, if you're like a Hollywood guy or yeah, something yeah. like that, maybe. But If yeah. you're a government so show like me, no, it's coach. 
<laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, a senator is going to sit and coach, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> but like that. So you should have – anyway, you know, I, right idea, poor execution. Right. And, and, you know, come back with a second offer. Don't just skulk away. <laughs> exactly. You could have come out and said, hey, you know, what about three All grand? Right. And you know, haggle with him right. a little bit. I'll double it. <laughs> yeah, I'll exactly. start signing autographs. Because he might not have <laughs> – he might not have had that much money in his pocket, oh, though. True. That might have been that, that, the limiting factor. Yeah. You know. All right, we got one more topic. Let's hit on it real quick, yeah. and then we'll let okay. go of this episode. Um, okay. Because this happened a few weeks ago. Interesting little topic for those of you who follow the Redskins Stadium stories like Steve and I love to. Um, the city council in Washington, D.C., kind of important to this whole stadium de- debate. and uh, the poss- I'd say debacle, not well, debate. But fair uh, enough. Uh, the, the city council, basically the chairman of the city council, Phil Mendelson has proposed that the city stop lobbying to purchase the land that is currently where RFK sits from the federal government. Um, it has to do with some loans that they've made that they got to pay off and some other language about Airbnb and a larger bill that they have going on for the city. Uh, but the gist is that. They don't want to spend any more money on trying to get Congress to sell the RFK lot to the city. And I, I don't know how much – I think I saw in one story it was about under $50,000 that they spent last year on that, which, you know, not that much, but that they need to – they want to put the money elsewhere. Well, purchasing the land would only be the tip of the iceberg. Right. Well, that, well, that's step one. Yeah. Yeah, the stadium – you know, you got to think in today's world, having done stadium development, you know, you're in, in 2019, you're talking about about a, like a billion dollar thing. OK, if you go on the cheap eight or nine hundred thousand dollars, fine. But if you build any sort of reasonable stadium, right. you're getting close to a billion dollars. <laughs> and so and how it works is California that is five billion because of all the land and it's a dome and all that stuff. Well, also, you got to understand the guy who you're talking about is a real estate developer. Right. And he's funding that, and it's a mixed use thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, you know, it's that's way bigger than what we're right. talking about. But even a reasonable stadium, I think eight hundred million to to a billion. And Dan Snyder is not going to fund all that. He's not going to finance all that. Owners really can't do that. He can finance part okay, of it, and that owners do do. And they will. Yeah. F- yeah, they will. Uh, they want to finance as little as possible, of course. But no owner is going to finance a billion dollars. The NFL would not let them do that because you can't. They, you know, the only other asset he could use and leverage is the team, and you can't do that. And so, right. I, I mean, it's it just not. You know, the idea of saying the owner should pay for their own, they could, but it's just not really very practical. You know, for them to do that. That's so why, somebody has to kind but of. But that's why you're seeing what's going on in LA and. Uh, Vegas, where you're getting these yeah. third parties to basically build the stadium now. And, you know, it, it, like that's part of the reason is the owners don't want to put up their money, so they get someone else to build it and they rent it out or whatever. Well, the, in the case of the Rams, it's not – I mean the owner is doing it. I mean it's it's because of just the is unique just, nature Is it just of, Vegas where they're doing that, where some third – random third parties doing it? <laughs> Well, yeah, Vegas is a different story because the casinos are involved, right. and they've got like I think Steve Wynn maybe I think that's who it is. involved yeah. in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, now the guy Stan Kroenke is the owner of the Rams. That's sort of the name who I was right, struggling right. to think. And of he the name. he's Stan Kroenke is a multi billion dollar real right, estate. And he's guy. spending five billion dollars to build all that. Yeah, and it's really part of a much bigger he's deal. Building a city so in ter- outside of it, he's building like an LA Live style. Right. Thing at a bigger scale, which is hard to fathom. But in terms of the red, so in terms of the Redskins, right. back to this. Uh, so I think it's it's more about not just about the land. It's a really about knowing what's to come, which is that the Reds, the city of Washington, or somebody is going to have to fund like half a billion dollars. Least, yeah, and that's just for uh, the or stadium not more. And buying the property is probably another billion. It will no. It's not nearly. You don't that think much. that all that not land a, on? No, not it's inter- a lot of land. No. No, you could buy the state of Rhode Island. You know, a billion dollars is way too much. No, um, but the point is, it's a lot of money. And the city of Washington's still paying debt service on the national stadium. What's an a, it's an MCI? What is the national stadium? It's just called National, national Park. Park. National Park. Okay. They're they're paying on it. they're paying like thirty forty. I forget the number. Something like thirty forty million a year like of that. debt yeah, service yeah. on that. Yeah, and so I think the city of Washington just doesn't want to do that. And this all may be part of we're a game, pay, we're too. We're still paying because, money on the convention center that they just built, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's what a lot of this uh, has but to it, do with. But the other part of it is there's two other states involved. And so, you know, I think this is part gamesmanship here. Um, somebody has got to build a stadium. Eventually. Somebody's got to be on board with this. I don't think Dan Snyder would ever move the Redskins because he's too much of a D.C. guy at heart. And that's one good thing about him. Um, but all the same, I think it's a very complicated subject. If you'd asked me when I wrote that article, what, a year ago, two years ago? I was convinced it was going to be Maryland just because of the way, you right. know, or not Virginia. Maryland. I was you, convinced it was going to be Virginia. Virginia Thank you. Everyone said it was locked up. And it, but, that, but the government has changed and the attitude has changed in Virginia. And so it's, you know, we'll see. I mean, I, I mean, the other part of it, D.C., is the name. That's not going to change. The name debate is over. It's not – the name is not going to no. change. Uh, but, I mean, the issue in D.C. is they, they have the support of the mayor right now, but – uh, as a resident, I'm not a big fan of our mayor. She's not very effective, so there's that. When is her term in? Uh, I think she's got four years still. So yeah, a while. she's got a while. Okay. Uh, the only supporters they had in the city council, outspoken supporters, one of them's ju- in a whole bunch of legal trouble, Jack Evans, and the other one was Vincent Gray, who's ex-mayor. Not exactly upstanding citizens. No, no. Every, <laughs> and the crowd. remaining like 12 people on the council are either against it or haven't really said anything. So – yeah, you don't have the um, now, council right now. Now, from a timing perspective, it's getting to the point where they it's getting tighter. Start to a little bit. I mean, again, from like a cradle to grave, from like an idea to opening day is like a ten year thing. But you could do it in like mm-hmm. eight. If you really had to, and so it's getting to the point where they're going to have to start having some more concrete plans, particularly when you've got so many different governments involved. If it's going to be in D.C., I mean, the federal government is going to have a right. role. You know, in the RFK site, whether it's a lease or perch, whatever. Right. You and know? it sounds like the plan um, that the city wants is they want to buy the land. That's what the city wants. Yeah, and the government has to want – the federal government has to want to let them right. buy the land, which I don't think it's on the government's radar scope in well, any way it right now. Well, is, uh, it, it is on the Trump administrations because they've been actually trying to sell as much federal land as they can, which is a whole other story. Yeah. There is yeah. that. But there's a land use yeah. issue because, like, the people, the local residents, all against it, like of the, yeah, for understandably so. I, I, I think I just think, generally speaking, there's a lot more complicated. There's a, there are more issues and there are more complicated issues in building a stadium in the Washington D.C. area than there are in a lot of other there cities. Are. Yes. <laughs> and now you could go all you know if you could talk Virginia into it. We talked about this off air, yeah. Alex. I mean, if you could talk Virginia into doing it or somebody into doing it. It truly is way oh, way out. If you go build a stadium out near Ashburn, it truly is a long right. way. I mean, I realize there's some DC snob guys like you, Alex, who just don't want to leave the city, but it really and truly is a long way right. out. E- even if you you're know. living in Virginia, it's a long way out. It's a long freaking way out. Yeah, I mean, so it would be far better if you could get it inside the Beltway somewhere. People could live with that more, but there's not a lot of land inside really the Beltway. Isn't. Just it, it exponentially complicates the development process, you know. And and being anything inside the city is Eight times more complicated because of the federal well, government. Well, and because there's even if it's simply only like three spots in the whole city where you can do there's it. There's no space. Yeah. There's yeah, no space. But it's just generally speaking, inside because it's Washington D.C. is way more complicated right. than any other city. So I, you know, I don't know where we go from here. Honestly, I, 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 you I know, mean, with this. I don't think the council's going to change enough in the next few years where they realistically get a majority of the council support for building a stadium at this point. So. Because you have to have the council, even if Dan Snyder wanted to do it on his right. own, you would need the city. Council. You would still have to have the city right. do it. You still have to have the city on board. You know, it's a tough. Even call, if they man. had a it's, mayor, and I know he's not popular, but someone like Mary Berry who just could get things done, he he would need the council support. Yeah, Marion Barry got things done by hook or by crook. Emphasis on crook. A lot of times, yes. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, you know, I just throw some crack dealers on there, and you know, you get Marion, you know, on board. I guess bags of money, you know, just whatever it took. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you don't have that kind of mayor. You don't have, and you don't have the council support. It's gonna be. I don't. Yeah. I don't know where they're actually gonna go. It doesn't look like Maryland's interested. You know. <laughs> For now, I mean, I, I don't know. It's. I don't even know what to predict. I, I don't either. I really like don't. Th- this to yeah. me actually was kind of a oh, I don't think it's going to happen at RFK either now. So, I never thought it was going to happen at RFK though. I never thought. I thought that. they were starting to get the inside track, and then this happened. So maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. so. You know, 
So stay tuned for more. We don't know. Yeah. You know, I think you and I and Rick Snyder probably know more about this than anybody in the, else in the media. And I don't think even Rick would say he's got a good no. handle on it. No, Rick was gonna happen very to confident was going to be over by uh, the MGM live out here. It's a good site. It's a decent it, site. It is, but it, that's dead too. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. tough. This is why it took Jack Can't Cook so mm-hmm. long to get the stadium built because same yep. reasons. You know, everybody wants a stadium yep. until you have a Everyone stadium. Everyone wants it until it's in their backyard too. <laughs> part of yeah, part of what I was involved in to, in, in on a tangential basis with the development of um of FedEx Field, which I will always call Jack Can't Cook Stadium. Right. And the one thing I can say about it is exactly that. We got involved in some neighborhoods and stuff around there, and they were very against right. it. Because everybody – nobody wants a gigantic stadium in their backyard for a variety of reasons. Right. You know, And so you're never going to have the support of the locals in this. And that's part of – in D.C., it's because it's such a dense place. Right. You know, you know, like, you know what I think would be a great site, but it's impossible? Like somewhere in like Crystal City. Uh, yeah, but you'd have to bulldoze buildings. I'm just saying, forget the development. Put it on a river right. like that on the Potomac River would be great. You know, or like in the Washington. I kind of, I kind of would uh, would like to bulldoze half of Crystal City. It's a mess down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Uh, but like, you know, like the Navy Yard area, yeah. you know, maybe. Well, that's right by Nats Park site. at this point. You know, that's where they put that. Yeah, that that's a great. You know, but it's doing anything in DC is so complicated. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, and one of these, the D.C. government is broke. That's the other thing. You know, raise your hand if you think the D.C. government can pay like $100 million in debt service or like $80 million in debt service. Yeah, I don't. I, on top of what they're paying for Nats Park. Well, so just to be clear, they're not, the government's not broke. We just ha- don't have that extra money sitting around. But it, but it's yeah. a government. Yeah, it's a, ultimately, it's a right. city. They don't have a tax base of like the state of Georgia. No. You know, I mean, that's my point. It's yeah, and DC has its problems and corruption, and all that. But at the end of the day, it's a city. Right. What's the population of DC? Uh, seven hundred thousand. Okay, so uh, you know, you have a seven hundred thousand uh, person tax base, and a lot of those, the land isn't worth very much. <laughs> you know, let's be honest. Like where you are, tax base is not paying a lot. No, you know? but you, you go over an award seven or Compare the other one. like ones, that yeah. to like the state of Texas. Oh, sure. The state of Texas can throw away eighty billion million a year if they have to on debt service for a stadium. The D.C. government just well, – it's tough for them because it's – Yeah, and like for the Nats Stadium, you had to do the whole like, well, we're going to tax hotel rooms to pay for it, that kind of thing. Well, that's every, – every city does that. That's well, not I mean, unusual. But that, that's but how they have to t- go about it. T- they don't have extra money. It's Yeah. It's just tougher because it's Washington, D.C., right. you know, <laughs> so – I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with it. I I don't either. I really don't. You know, I Okay, you want to I here's my bet. They will still be at okay. FedEx Field in 2028 now at this point. When they're supposed to be gone. Um I don't know. I don't think that. I, I it looks dark now. You know, things are darkest, you know, it's darkest before the dawn, Sure. you know. We're kind of in the part of the movie where the hero just got injured. Sure. You know, the bad guy's standing over him with a sword or a gun in his hand, laughing. Yeah, that's kind of where we are at the stadium part. And eventually, somebody's going to ante up the money in the land. It may not be what everybody wants, but it's, it's going to happen at some they're point. They're going to be in so the Richmond. I don't know. I don't think they're going to be in That's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the Richmond Redskins, it cert- that certainly isn't going to happen. Uh, so, no, I, if, if that's the bet, I'm going to say okay. no. So, one no, one we'll yes, and... If we're still doing this show in 2028, we'll have to come back right. to this. If we can remember. Somebody out there, write this down. Oh, man. We'll be old. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But somebody write this down and come back to this in 2028, and we'll all see. Right. All right. Well, with that, thank you to all of our listeners for still listening. I think we kind of went on a stadium rant there for about a half hour, you and I. So <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit Everyone long. turned it off. That's what I know. <laughs> Uh, but Probably. if you're still listening, thank you, and I hope you enjoy your Fourth of July this week. Don't blow your hand off, please, because we need you to, you know, type us blog posts. Don't t- don't pull a JPP. Don't pull JPP. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Goodbye.